So before we were working with indefinite integrals, and now I'd like to show you something with definite integrals. These are ones that are quite useful. We can do a lot of things with these. So the very first step, I think, is to actually talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus. So what that's going to be, maybe I'll just write it down here. So for a, maybe I'll turn in blue here. So for a continuous, and remember continuous means a function that doesn't have any weird gaps in it. So for a continuous function, f of x. Now there's a reason, by the way, why we call it fundamental. You'll see that in a second here. So for a continuous function, f of x with antiderivative. So if we write the antiderivative as like we did before with capital F of x, then we can say this. This is the key thing here. So we have the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Now uh, these are here, these are going to be the bounds here. We'll do that in a second. Um, it's going to be the antiderivative evaluated at b minus the antiderivative evaluated at a. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus right here. So maybe I'll write that in a sort of big thing here. So this right here, this is the fundamental theorem of calculus right here. That's the important thing. This is super duper important. In fact, it's fundamental, right? It works for all things. So what this really means here, maybe we can actually start defining a few things, maybe clarify a bit. So these are here, these are your bounds. So if something has definite integrals, what it means is you have bounds. You know where you have to start and where you have to finish. So these are here, these are your bounds. This is the lower bound. This is the upper bound. So what they're trying to tell you is if you have sort of any type of equation, let's say, I don't know, or any type of graph, it doesn't matter what the shape is, it's maybe some weird sort of shape like this. If you want to take the area under the curve, let's say from, I don't know, from here to here, well, this would be A, this would be B. So this, when I say the lower bound, I mean, you know, start here, finish here, and this right here, if that's the area you want to find, this allows you to do exactly that. So the the area under the curve of f of x, so if we had the equation for this graph right here, this says basically start here, finish here. So that means, see, start at this x value and finish at this x value. Because remember, it all depends on where you start and finish. The area totally depends on your start and finish. Right? If I took the area from here to all the way over here, it would be way different than this little piece here. So basically it says start here, finish here. And how you do it, you take the antiderivative evaluate it at the upper bound minus the antiderivative evaluate it at the lower bound. And although this notation may look a little bit weird, this is super straightforward to use, I think. The only trick is you have to be good at finding antiderivatives. And those we dealt with with our indefinite integrals. So now we can actually start using this fundamental theorem of calculus to find the area under some really weird looking curve. Okay, so as long as you know the, so maybe I'll write that down, so this is the key thing here. So this right here, it tells you, this is really important, I think, tells you the area under a curve, f of x, you know, from, whoops, actually, I guess that's enough. Just say area under a curve, f of x. Obviously, you just have to know where you start, where you finish. That's why it's a definite integral. Definite because you have bounds. So you know for sure start here, for sure finish here. Do you notice there's no plus C? That's the difference between definite and indefinite. So again, indefinite integrals would be things where we didn't have bounds. There, this A and B wouldn't be there. Then we would just find the antiderivative and add a C. But if we have a definite integral, here's how we do it. We start here, finish here. That means you find the antiderivative, but you evaluate it at your top value, and you subtract from it the antiderivative evaluated at your bottom value, in other words, your lower bound. So that's how you deal with something like this. So what I'm going to show you then is the next video, I'm gonna show you um, how to actually deal with this. So we're gonna, we're gonna use the fundamental theorem of calculus to actually find areas under curves.